At Progressive, we know there's nothing like the feeling of riding a motorcycle with your crew on the open road. That symphony of engines roaring in perfect harmony. It's a feeling that would be impossible to recreate on the radio. Until now. Hit it, Jerry. Oh, my word. Really, really terrible. Is that a glockenspiel, Jerry? Quote with Progressive and see if you could save with America's number one motorcycle insurer. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Uh, no, no, Jerry. It's over. Alrighty, welcome to a very important edition of the Self Stop Podcast. I am your host, Cameron Tepetabai. I am joined by Alex Holbert and Dr. Justin Quinn. I'm going to give us a timestamp right away. It's Monday, 3 p.m. on the East Coast. So we are a few hours removed from quite a lot of news. And to break it all down, we bring in Mark Murphy of the Boston Herald. Mark, how are you? Great, guys. How about you? Energized by the day's news um, (laughs) and all that came with it. So, uh, Mark, you're here to talk to us about kind of what we learned, what we think we learned, what we were told is true, but might not be so. Um, so in a second, I'm going to kind of swing it to Justin and then Alex, because we each are going to take this um, in pieces. But first, I'll set the table for anyone who is unaware. Um, the story begins, as it always does, on Twitter, where Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN at about 2.30 a.m. East Coast time, which may or may not be important, uh, offers that the Celtics are in the mix for Kevin Durant. Um, he doesn't explicitly say that Jalen Brown has been offered, but he implies as such in his writing, I would say that was my read on it. By 7 a.m. the next day, Shams Charania of The Athletic has a story out where he indeed says the following, that the Celtics offered Jalen Brown, Derek White, and a single pick for Kevin Durant, and that the Nets countered, asking for Brown, Marcus Smart, perhaps a rotation player, and much more draft capital. Um, And since then, the world has been abuzz with who said what and why. So, Mark, I'm going to swing things to Justin, who's going to ask you about what, what you think and what you know. Sure. So apart from having our off-season downtime plans absolutely nuked from 10,000 feet, uh, what are your impressions from this reporting so far? Um, <clears throat> I think it, you know, Brian Windhorst had a report later on that this was probably an old deal, which I tend to believe. Um, <clears throat> I had... I had reported right about the start of the trade deadline. I had talked to a league executive who said, yes, the Celtics were going to be in the room for this. They, you know, and it was going to be a very large room, probably, you know, they were going to be one of maybe 20, 25 teams who were kicking the tires. Uh, A lot of teams have since done that with very little result for the Nets. Um, the logical guy to put in there when you're discussing a trade is Jalen. He's your number two. Uh, could conceivably be the value for Kevin Durant. And because the Nets have been looking for the sky, basically, um, you know, they've turned down a lot of possibilities uh, that it would be Jalen. Um, You know, as Marcus Smart has learned over the years, you know, if you're that guy, you're going to be mentioned mentioned in every possible deal. It doesn't mean that you're actually going somewhere, but it does mean that a team is trying to find out what another player is worth. In this case, with Durant, the Nets are looking for multi. They're looking for a star and multiple draft picks. Jalen Brown being involved in the trade with picks plus another player is an incredible overpay. He's a 25-year-old future star. If he's not a star already for a guy who's 33 and has has $198 million left on his contract, uh, that's that's a huge ask by the Nets. But the Nets were in a very comfortable position. They can just move forward with what they have and see if they can finally make it work. They act, they haven't actually put Kyrie, KD, and Ben Simmons on the floor together yet. You know, yeah. they can always fall back on that. 
when I first heard the news, I was surprised by the level of detail that was coming out, which kind of, it gives credence to, to, the, to the idea that the talks actually were happening. The sources are as impeccable uh-huh. as they come. So for me, I was pretty, I would say alarmed, even though, you know, I am the, probably one of the biggest fanboys out there for Jalen, but it's a business, right? And you have to imagine that that, is kind of a, of a deal that would have to take place. Like you'd have to have Jalen Brown in. And like you said, they're, they're gonna be looking for more pieces, but the report that you mentioned about Windhorse talking about this being an older deal, that to me made me think that, I looked at it in a very different light as soon as I heard that, that this is kind of more of the Nets trying to up the ask that they're getting out of other teams. Yeah. Um, right. On the Celtics end, would you say that maybe the Brogdon deal might have dampened some interest in this? Do you think there's any, you know, I think, I think, since? I think the Brogdon deal really completed the picture for the Celtics. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, they've got their playmaker, they've got their point guard. Um, you know, if you're suddenly trading Jalen plus more for an aging player, you're, really narrowing your window. I mean, why wouldn't you want to keep your window wide open, which, you know, what is the, what is the average age of the core right now? About 26 years old. Yeah. It's very Uh, team. You know, why would you want to age that? So, you know, and the thing I was thinking this morning was the only reason this would be a serious pitch by the Celtics as if they felt that they couldn't hold on to Jalen in another two years. I talked to somebody today who said Jalen loves it in Boston, that tweet he sent out, the SMH tweet. Mm -hmm. That was basically his frustration at having to be included in trades, you know. Again, he could call up Mr. Smart to find out what those emotions are like to go through every year. But I think that you know, it's going to have to be a super max to hold on to them, which I would think the Celtics would be very willing to do. I mean, there's there's very few players you would trade Jalen Brown for straight up, never mind with additional material. That was my thoughts also. I was I was concerned that maybe there might be this idea that either he would potentially be a flight risk based on things we don't know, because really what's going on behind the scenes is the most important conversation that we are not hearing about. Right. Uh, so speaking of that, like, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah. What have you been hearing about Kevin Durant in the eyes of Ime Udoka, Brad Stevens, unnamed front office people, Mike Zarin, whoever? Well, they, they love him, obviously, and they'd love to have him. Um, you know, you're going back to the previous administration, but it's not the first time they've made a run at him and, before and they they felt that they had to at least take a serious look at what it would take to get them now um the if you have to give up Jalen for him and you feel you're that close to a title then you do it so I know Alex has some some questions about you know who benefits from this coming out now Yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit about front office politics, and you kind of mentioned earlier, Justin, that there might be more to this on the Nets end than the Celtics. And so I want to ask you, Mark, um, it seems like the way that the media operates in the NBA, there's obviously kind of seasoned beat reporters like yourself that are more interested in just the stories. But there's also uh, the kind of Twitter NBA reporting where it's about banging out something in 230 characters and trying to get information out as quickly as possible. And as a kind of thinker about the NBA, I've found that um, those those tweets, particularly from like Woj or Shams or kind of other people, you, you have to kind of do a little thinking about those as far as like, why did this come out now? What, who does this benefit? What's the angle? So to that end, I wanted mm. to ask you, who kind of benefits from a tweet like this coming out right now? And how does this sort of sausage behind the scenes get made, so to speak? Um, well, the Nets clearly benefit. Uh, 
the person I talked to today was 100% convinced that the Nets are just so down on the offers they've received so far. I mean, the biggest name before Jalen was who? Tyler, Tyler Hero. Um, that they're trying to create a market. So this isn't just about the Celtics. It, it's about trying to increase the bidding again. Um, you know, and to beat an offer of Jalen Brown, if that is an offer, or if, and that's the other distinction that has to be made. Sure, maybe they talked about Jalen Brown in a, in a deal, but was he ever actually? Progressive Snapshot can save you money based on how you drive and how much you drive. So the safer you drive, the more money you could save. Now, if you didn't hear that because you were looking at your phone while driving, let me say it again. Seriously, put down your phone. That is so unsafe. If you didn't do stuff like use your phone while driving, you could save money with Progressive Snapshot. But saving or not, just put it down. <clears throat> and if you did hear it the first time because you weren't looking at your phone, nice work. You'd love Snapshot from Progressive because it rewards safe drivers. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California and North Carolina or from all agents. Offer. I mean, that was probably just, it could be that Brad Stevens called just to get the param parameters, what, what will be needed in this. And that's what was set up by the Nets. Um, but... Yeah, they're trying. They're trying to create a market, and uh, agents do it. General managers do it, uh, and it's kind of a dead time for the Nets. To that end, you mentioned earlier when kind of talking about the Jalen Brown tweet, uh, the SMH tweet, um, and kind of the concerns around the possibility of his future free agency, which is coming up pretty soon in two years. Um, and thinking about that in the kind of broader context of like player relationships to the front office, I mean, do you get the sense that like Jalen Brown, it seems like per Windhorse, this deal was proposed a while ago. Do you get the sense that Jalen Brown has known about this as a possibility for some time, that this was a surprise? Uh, how can, what do you get, gather as far as the communication between Brad Stevens and Jalen Brown about stuff like this more broadly? Brad tends to be pretty open with his players. Uh, he was in communication with Smart last summer, uh, just about where he stood. And, you know, they're always talking with the agents. I mean, Jason Glushon, who was Jalen's agent, Al Horford's too, by the way, um, is, you know, they're, they're able to start discussing extension in October. So, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to get a sense for where he fits that way. And the message I got this morning is that Jalen wants to come back. Obviously, are they willing to pay him what he thinks he's worth, which is going to be quite a bit. Um, but I, I just think that it's, uh, You know, it, it's everybody's trying to create a market. I guess that's my point. Yeah, it seems like that's definitely the case. And thus, there's a kind of strategic element behind when things are released and when things are not released. So in your experience, you've been around the block for a while now. How often do things get leaked or shared? And, you know, thinking about the Celtics and how they've moved this offseason with the Brogdon trade, for example, which came completely out of nowhere, seemingly. When do things tend to kind of stay under wraps a little more? Um, with Brad, they tend to stay under wraps. Um, one guy who's notorious for floating things like this is Daryl Morey. Um, you had James Harden landing everywhere back a couple of years ago. Uh, supposedly, he was having dinner with Danny Ainge one night. I remember that report. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, in the Brogdon deal is the perfect example of it. It was done very quietly. Um, and that tends, that tends to be what Brad does. Cool. Cam, you want to take it from here? Sure. Uh, yeah, Mark, I'm going to bring it home, but first I'm going to pause the action and talk about our friends over at betonline.ag, the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest odds, news, sports developments, including this scorching hot MLB season, all the latest fighting news, or even next season's early NFL futures. 
Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, live betting, playoffs, esports, and more. Just head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up. And if you use our promo code CLNS50, you will get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit to get into the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, uh, Mark, before we go anywhere, what do you think of all of this? Um, if you were in the Celtics front office, um, would you pick up the phone and dial the nets again, or what's done is done? Uh, I don't. I don't think it serves them any purpose to call the nets again. I think it's about the nets trying to uh, cut back on what they're asking for because they're asking for much more than anyone in the league is willing to offer at the moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Antoine Walker said as such on first things first, um, that he was very critical of even the possibility of a Jalen Brown, Kevin Durant trade. Um, do you, do you think there's a Celtics package that doesn't include Brown that uh, could get the deal done or it's, it's Brown or bust for the Nets? Um, yeah. Jason Tatum straight up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just, I just don't, uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. And why would you, you came within, you came within two wins of an NBA title this year and you've added to it. You've added where your weaknesses were. They were a ball handling mess against the Warriors. They've, mm-hmm. they've added playmaking. They've added shooting. You're not that far away. Um, you know, to Kevin Durant is an amazing player. Uh, personally, my favorite player to watch in the league, but is it worth it? I, I just don't think it's worth it from their standpoint, at least not for what you would have to give up. And I don't think, go ahead. We also talked a little bit before we got on air about what the dynamics of the Celtics looking like after such a trade as what is being discussed. And even if it were Derek White and Jalen Brown, then you still have a pretty thin and not particularly dynamic backcourt. And if it includes Marcus Smart, then you are getting perilously thin as uh, I think Jay King wrote about this today on The Athletic about how you get some, some perks from adding Kevin Durant, but you also bring in a whole host of new weaknesses and that could right. be one of them. Right. And one thing, I mean, his Achilles aside, he's been a very healthy player. But, you know, he's 33 years old, and that's an awful lot of money over the next four years. I mean, yeah, I I also really enjoy watching Durant play, but I will offer that he is someone with health history and also um, isn't always the happiest camper. Um, And so four years for a 33-year-old with a knack for airing his frustrations is, is a big gamble vis-a-vis a 25-year-old stud who seems very happy and content. Right. Um, Mark, a few more questions, and then we'll get you out of here. Sure. Uh, uh, a little less sexy, but what have you heard about the back end of the Celtics roster? Do you think there's any moves this summer, or do you think you know they head into training camp and kind of let the dust settle? I think, I think they head into training camp. I think that, um, you know, I, th- I think that Kevin Jelly actually was intriguing enough that at least he's a guy you can keep on the outskirts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they keep going back to Luke Cornett. I think they're, you know, the fact that he can hit open threes is something they like. And he is actually a pretty good shot blocker. I mean, not, not as a steady diet, but to plug those holes. And I think that, you know, Grant Williams, I think we talked about this the last time I talked to you guys. Mm -hmm. I think Grant Williams role is going to increase this year and they will be better able to play small, especially with all those guards now. Sure. Uh, Speaking of all those guards, just around the league, um, Kyrie Irving, as of this recording, the Pat McAfee show is saying that he wants to play it out in Brooklyn. Um, do you care to comment on Kyrie Irving or? Do you, uh, say- you know, he, he, he's, uh, you know, he, he, he know he, he's a weatherman. He knows how to test the wind, right? Hmm. So he sees how things are going. He wants to make sure he's ahead of the news cycle. Yeah, I can see that. And actually, that's my prediction for the Nets is that you're going to have those three guys on the floor uh, plus Joe Harris. Sure. And that's actually a very formidable, 
formidable team. That it's, uh, you know, I mean, Dur Durant has very limited power. I mean, he's got four, he's under contract for another four years. Yeah, and listeners of a certain age will remember that a very similar thing played out with Kobe Bryant. And mm -hmm. look what happened there. Right. Uh, all right, Mark, I will get you out of here on this. This is so tangentially related to the Celtics, but I'm going to have it. Uh, is Donovan Mitchell playing for Danny Ainge's Jazz this time in October, or is he playing elsewhere? I think he's playing elsewhere. Uh, it's starting to look like it doesn't suit the Jazz at all to keep him. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays for the Knicks. I love that. Yeah, we maybe with you, we suggested that there are a lot of dominoes to fall. Um, so we will let you go and enjoy whatever <laughs> off-season peace and quiet you can before inevitably the next uh, Twitter notification changes all that. So Mark Murphy of the Boston Herald, thank you so, so much for coming by. Thanks, guys. Take care. Likewise, Bye. you too. It's Mark. Progressive is America's number one motorcycle insurer, so we understand motorcycles. No, really, we have a bike translator. Uh, okay, this is awkward, but this bike says he'd appreciate it if you removed his skull pattern saddlebags. <laughs> he feels self-conscious about them around all the other bikes, and he says you're not fooling anyone. You mostly ride with your golfing buddies. <laughs> Listen, I'm just the messenger here. Oh, no, I don't want to say that. I think you made yourself clear. Quote with Progressive and see if you could save with America's number one motorcycle insurer. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Change your vehicle's oil before your summer road trip and save money now with Pennzoil and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Right now, get five quarts of Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic for just $22.95 after mail-in rebate. Save money and protect your engine against sludge and wear with the synthetic oil change. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today or O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Oh, oh, oh,